We've gone ahead and have drawn two charged concentric spherical shells. One has a radius of 10 centimeters, which we've denoted capital R subscript one, and the other larger shell has a radius of 15 centimeters, which we've denoted capital R subscript two. Now how we calculate the electric field of these spherical shells will depend on Gauss's law, but it will ultimately depend on whether the field is being calculated beyond the spherical shell or inside the spherical shell. So for example, if we look at this set of information over here, if you're calculating an electric field due to a spherical shell at a location that lies outside of the shell, then you would simply be using this equation right here to determine the magnitude of that field. However, if you are calculating the electric field inside the spherical shell, well, it turns out that's much easier. It's actually just equal to zero. So these are the two results from Gauss's law that we'll be using for the two spherical shells. So keep those in mind as we look at part A. Now in part A, we are asked to calculate an electric field at a distance of 12 centimeters. We should notice that 12 centimeters lies outside of the first shell, but it lies inside of the second shell. So the results of Gauss's law just discussed are going to help us because, again, because our location is outside of the first shell, we would use this equation to determine the field. With regard to the second shell, our location is actually inside of that shell. So the electric field produced at that location by that outer shell is just zero. It's almost as if we can actually take out that second shell. It just doesn't matter for part A, because again, that second shell has a radius that is larger than the location at which we're calculating the field. So that field would be zero from that larger shell. So all we need to do in part A is calculate the electric field based on the smaller radius shell, the inner shell. And we're going to be doing that by using this first equation here. We'll have one divided by four pi. Epsilon is a constant value. It's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulombs squared over Newton meters squared. And then we'll multiply this by the amount of charge on that inner shell. And that was given in the problem as four times 10 to the negative eighth and that'll be coulombs, and then divided by the distance squared. Now, notice the distance was given in part A. It's 12 centimeters, but we have to convert that into meters. So that would be 12 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. And then don't forget to square that distance. So when you punch that into your calculator, you should end up with approximately 24,977 and then the field unit will be in newtons per coulomb. So this would be the correct answer to part A. Now in part B, we are calculating the field at a distance of 20 centimeters. Now we have to notice that we're going to need to put back in the other shell. So let's do that. So there we have it. The second shell has been put back in and this time we're calculating the field strength at a location that lies outside of both shells. It's 20 centimeters. So it would be perhaps somewhere out here would be the distance at which we're trying to calculate the electric field. And so remember, the first result of Gauss's law for spherical shell says, look, if you're outside of the spherical shell, then just use this equation to calculate the electric field. Because we're outside of both of the shells, we're going to have to use this equation twice one for each shell. Notice that the charge on both of the spherical shells is positive. So that will mean that the electric field direction will be the same. That means we can simply add the two fields together. So here we go in part B, we're going to be applying this Gauss's law result twice. So let's set it up. So here are the two expressions for the electric fields. Again, notice that we're allowed to just add them together because they were both produced by positive shells. The electric fields point in the same direction, so we can just add their magnitudes together. Here's the expression for the first shell, and then here's the expression for the second shell. Notice again that we've converted the distance into meters by multiplying 20 centimeters by 10 to the minus 2 to get it into meters. Now, you might also notice that we have a GCF here. It might be easier for the computation to factor it out. We have 1 over this 4 pi epsilon times the distance squared in that term, and then we also have it in that term right there. So if we factor that out to the outside, 
then we will have the term in green right there. And then what is left over is just the two charges that are being added together right here. Not sure why that's blinking at me. So we'll go ahead and punch this into our calculators. And when we do so, we get an electric field equal to 13,488 newtons per coulomb. So this would be the correct answer for part B.